Hello again, this is Brendan and my third or fourth video of this nature, which uh, I hope to be the bottom percent of what will be many videos to come. What I'm going to do today is mess around with some turtles. Um, you know, not literally, but turtle drawing. And so I got the Wac Wacom tablet here, the bamboo. And uh, I got these photos from uh, Wikipedia. What this is, uh, with the Wikipedia, you know, these are always pretty good for reference um, when you're doing live stuff like this because there's no copyright stuff on them. Or at least I double-checked. They did say that they are free to the public domain or however they, you know, whatever terminology they use for that. So what I'm going to do here is um, <clears throat> the reason I have so many, and they're all different types, <clears throat> I'm going to try to uh, homogenize just the general look of a turtle. And so, you know, when you need to, uh, if you ever need to call upon, like, uh, the ability to draw a turtle in the future, but it doesn't really matter which one is just some turtle, they should all have a little bit of something in common. And I think these ones here pretty much represent that. I thought this one was nice to get a close-up of the face. No, these are all actually pretty big. You know, I can zoom in like that. Um, this canvas is like 4,000, 5,000 wide, so, um, yeah, let me see what I'm going to do here. One part about it is the, uh, I'm just making a study here, so I guess the most important thing, obviously, is the, uh, the turtle shell and, uh, what happens there. One thing you notice here is he's got kind of like a, a rim on the outside of the shell, and then there's inner parts where you have these cells, and it goes something like one, two, three, four, five down the, uh, the middle, and then you have one, two, three, four on this side. So that's a total of nine. And then here, and as I recall, it comes out to uh, 15. I mean, 13. Sorry, so that makes sense. It's 5 plus 4 plus 4 equals 13. And some people, I don't know, once said, uh, what, what was that? 13 has something to do with maybe the actual number of times that something happens, like the. Um, the the moon goes around it, like it's some relation with the moon but that could be totally just coincidence I don't know I think I think it kind of makes sense sometimes because some of the weird things that uh, people say um, is something that sound really weird about how like you know some things in nature have a relation to the moon and the stars such as like is it uh, astrology? Not to be confused with astronomy. The astrology where you have like, you know, Pisces and, and all that stuff. You see one, two, three, so there should be like two more here. I'm just doing this like very, very, very rough. I'm not even like thinking. Because I just want to jot it down as it'll be like my, my reference, like a sketch reference. Hmm, I wish I could see that back part there. I wonder if that goes. I'm You know, I'm going to do, I'm going to assume. It kind of does what that does <clears throat> in the front. It's probably one of these, uh, just more, yeah, like that, and it gets cut off. It's weird how it does that. But yeah, going back to the um, the uh, astrology, um, who's to say that, I mean, definitely, I, I don't believe that you can tell the future or anything like that, but who's to say that all of it is 100% false because we really don't know that much about what's going on in the universe. This is kind of weird. How does this it goes from that? From the point, it comes like this. So you get two of these kind of things, or actually three, right? Yeah, it goes off like that. And I think these ones just come down like that, which would be kind of easy. Yeah. Then, yeah, it just goes from those those points there. So here you have, like, it's, you know, this, this kind of thing here. It's like, hmm... What would you call that? I don't know the official term. It's almost like a diamond, but then it gets cut off here. So you have like, if this were to be the traditional diamond shape, but they cut it off here. It's like a diamond with cut off wings. So you get that kind of shape that comes out of there. And that seems to be the uh, the prevalent form that gets reused. The same, um, and it's kind of interesting how they, almost like a Escher drawing, you know, Escher. <coughs> how he'd have all these things repeating. And uh, they'd fit inside a pattern. So, um, because even right here, this one also has that form. This one here, it's like the same as this form, but cut off in half. So that happens here. If the shell were to continue on, there might be, you know, maybe there'd be another one like this. 
So, yeah. And obviously, this is not like, uh, how to say, the, the, the proportions of it are all knocked off. Like, this one is too big, that's too small. Um, which is not the case, it seems to be here. It does seem like these get a little bit smaller in the front. <coughs> And over here, the same thing happens. This is a sea turtle. Now, the difference with this, obviously, is going to have to do with the uh, the terrains that they live in. So this type of uh, sea turtle, they spend more time underwater swimming a lot in the ocean, and they have to uh, swim against strong currents and stuff. So uh, they have these stronger flipper uh, fish-like uh, things going on. And whereas this turtle, he also has that, but he seems, his body seems more, uh, see, whereas this one is like almost like a, a boat, kind of like not aerodynamic what would you call that aqua dynamic is that actually the word but yeah it's just more suitable for being smooth and stealthy and going through the water whereas his body is kind of like ah, he doesn't care about that it's rigid he just wants to uh, be able to rough the wild so it's like a difference between a, a tank and a, a navy seal kind of thing they have the box turtle they're kind of goofy looking but uh, I guess they're suitable for the grassy trains that they uh, they walk through so that was one thing just to study the shell really quickly so and I do think even with this one he looks like he has all these flowery patterns but if you zoom in and look at where the actual divisions on the uh, where the divisions are for each shell it's pretty much the same as that you know that other one we just drew there it does have a consistency to it it's just that the markings on the shell have a totally different thing going on it's a little randomized it almost looks like uh, a sun if I, if I were to draw here, which, oh, it's underneath that anyway. But anyway, there's that there, that almost like sun rays coming out. It's a similar thing going on here, almost kind of like a uh, sparkling uh, effect, tie-dye effect or something. <clears throat> and then this one, again, we have the same pattern. So the pattern is always consistent. It has one, two, oh no, this guy is more though. The top pattern is the same. It's like one section here, two, three, four. And then the fifth one was probably in the back, and then one, two, three, four on the side. I can't see the whole thing, but I'm guessing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that he still got the the original 13 on the top, and he has some additional ones on the side. So <clears throat> this one, where I can't remember. I think this one came from like Czech. What do they call it Czech Republic. Uh, yeah, you can look that if you look on just look for turtle on Wikipedia, you'll see that one. And uh, so there's all different types of turtles. There's like hundreds of different types I guess <clears throat> so yeah but I mean you know who's to say that it doesn't affect okay I, I don't believe you can tell the future with astronomy or something like that but who's to say it's not true that it might have some effect on the animals because if you think about it, all the animals here a lot of them originated in the ocean and a lot of modern science still seems to point towards a belief that all of the animals originated from uh, the ocean. I don't know if that's still in debate or not. I used to hear some people say like people more likely originated from trees and there was a special word for that kind of animal. I don't know. But I just watched uh, David Attenborough's documentaries on uh, which they have on YouTube pretty much for free. And if you go watch those, the one where uh, which one is it? Well, he goes through prehistoric life, basically. He goes back in time. And uh, the way he described it was that there was a transgression. Is transgression the word? Transition. Sorry. Transition from the, uh, the fish, you know, water-breathing animals with the gills onto the land animals and somewhere in between maybe some amphibious animals. So that would suggest that we all came from there. So if, if that's true, and uh, the moon, they say, has a lot of weight on the tides, then how strange would it be to believe that some of the things that you see in nature are affected by the moon? I don't think it's that bizarre. But it's kind of a weird theory. Anyway, it's an easy way to remember that there are, uh, you know, how many markings, how, how many cells are on the back of a turtle shell. Just remember it's like uh, number 13 and... Um, yeah, and also they say, like, well, actually, the moon should revolve, like, 12 times. There's 12 months in a year. But then again, if you do your history on that, there's actually 28 days in a month. And uh, the way we add days, maybe there should actually be 13 months. Or, or maybe it actually spins 13. I don't know. 
you can double check the facts on that. I, I don't really care. But that's just something I heard somebody say before. I thought it was interesting. Um, and so we got that. This is, you know, that was a rough one. This one's a little better. And then we'll, we'll have some fun with it. You know, we can do a little something. I want to notice where his head comes out and um, the, the general shape. This one has kind of a teardrop shape. And, uh, well, it's, it's side view, so it's hard to tell. Uh, also, these parts here. Let me see. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Five. It seems like one cell component has one, two, three of the little components going in there. Let me put this layer on the top so I can actually see what I'm doing. See, so there's like, um, I didn't move. Okay. Yeah. See, so here's like one cell here. So you can see it. And um, it seems like with one cell in this area, there seems to be one, two, three of these. There's one, two, three, right? Let's see if that's true for this one also. Here's another cell over here and again we'll get one is that uh, this little glare in there it's hard to tell one no actually this one's two like two and a half let's see what happens over here yeah here's where one cell is and we get one two three and a little bit more so there's no consistency there however oh there's two lines per cell that come out except for this one that has three. Yeah, I think there just might not be too much consistency, but you can say it's somewhere between two and three of uh, uh, for each cell that we have here. It's somewhere between two and three of the subcells. That might be what these are here too. There's like one, two and a half. So it was two and a half for three. So what I would do for this situation, and the first one seems to be the first behind his head. There's two, and they're centered. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, this one's pretty clear. See, they start off like, uh, I don't know what analogy you could use. Are they like horns on the back of his head? There's just uh, two back to back centered uh, coming out from where his neck is. So in this situation, that would be like one of these. And then we'd go, I don't know, like they did on that, the sea turtle was kind of like this. Kind of like two here and two here somewhere between two and three. Do we have a view of the back? Not too much back view. I think it's even all the way around though. So it'd be something like this. I'll just keep doing one, two. And even like this is being a little meticulous, you know, like by the time it's all said and done, people probably don't even uh, pay attention. So the first line is going to be dead center. That's one easy way of saying it, I guess. Most people wouldn't even pay attention to a lot of these details, and uh, but if it's like an illustration, uh, you know, not a scientific illustration, but a cartoon, children's book, these kind of things, and obviously this is being way too detail orientated. It's not worth the time because <clears throat> people just won't even notice. You know, it, you'll be busy. Uh, people will be busy paying attention to the story and all these things. So. Nobody's going to sit there and count how many uh, shells are on the back. But it's good to, I mean, just in case, it's always good to have those things. It's like if you're watching a movie and uh, you know, there's all these little details. If somebody, somebody's watching a movie, there was actually one with um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was watching uh, Titanic mm -hmm. and he got angry because uh, when they showed the night sky, he said it, it just didn't look anything like what a a nice guy should be and uh, of course Neil deGrasse Tyson he's uh, what do you call a cosmologist like someone who studies the stars in the sky uh, so there's eyes I'm just gonna draw them right here I really like uh, the way his eyes it's almost like you get a perfect circle I mean you really zoom in there basically you just see his, it's like his eyeball is just popping out of his head right his round eyeball and then the way that they droop is kind of funny looking just kind of droop like that, perfect circle. And there's a little bit of an eyelid, so I guess it should come up a little bit like this. I'll just erase some of that. Tiny little bit of an eyelid. And are we dealing, you know, actually, maybe I should have got a closer up one. They're reptiles, but I don't think they have, like, the um, snake eyes. I think, as I recall, if we zoom in here, it looks like he has a pupil just like mammals. It's not like 
Yeah, because some a, a lot of reptiles actually they have the snake eyes, but I think he doesn't. I think he's more like that. Could be wrong, but for now I'm just gonna leave it like that. And the head. <clears throat> Let's see what's uh, similar on the head. They all seem to have this nose, <clears throat> two dots right there, and then the eyes bulge out on the sides. A common feature. You know, two dots right here. I just pulled out on the side, and there's a forehead, just a flat forehead like that, and that seems to be consistent through all of them. His eyes are bulging out. He's got thicker skin. He's got more of that reptile kind of look at him. With uh, some, uh, you'll notice with a lot of turtles, they stay in the water all the time. So what I would do here is kind of like this, because that front part. It's almost like a beak is kind of the word that comes to my mind. It's almost like you could imagine a beak coming out here like a bird, right? So this part here kind of comes in like that, and the eyes are bulging out on the sides. Of course, that looks funny. Not supposed to be like that, but yeah, that's what happens. Um, so it's almost like you started drawing a beak and then just cut it off like that. That's, I think, what will give you that turtle head look. And then the back, of course, he has to have a neck that looks like it retracts. If he's retracting, I guess. Sometimes they stick it out real far. <clears throat> and in this case, you know, it's, it looks like a turtleneck, basically. But in this case, it's coming out far. So when he sticks it out far, as I'm doing here, he has the, um, what would you call it, sort of, uh, the, the neck is skinnier than the head. So, yeah, it just comes in a little bit. Kind of like a twig branch and then we get to the arms or legs you call them arms or legs in this case one two three four I think we're going with the uh, traditional five digit creature here where he's got four on the front and one tapering off in the back and they're kind of like claws except for the sea turtle right so you remember if you're doing a sea turtle then you make them like flippers otherwise go ahead and just go straight for the, the claws so and it come out his first two legs are always right next to his head <clears throat> and come out like this and then they go back because they're swimmers remember so they have this like paddling kind of thing going on and they can do the claws like that this is just very simple it almost looks like a hoof the way I did it there but I don't care fix that later. So that is true. This one can even go like this. You have one point forward just to show like he's swimming or walking. And then um, oh, that's another interesting thing to point out. When they're walking do they have uh, you know like when cats or dogs are walking let me draw one real quick. Let's say it's a uh, cat dog. Doesn't matter. They have like this leg will be going forward. That one's forward. So this one, wait, is it like more like this? I, I can't remember. So like one is forward, one is back. But when they're running, then you'll have both of them in you know either forward or back position. But I think this is incorrect. I think it's more like this. Yeah. Could be wrong. I got to look that up. But yeah, it's just different with different animals too, the way that they do it. And that makes actually a big difference. Goes to show I haven't been drawing many moving animals recently. So I'll have to, uh, maybe I'll bring that up in the next video, actually, how they move. Um, but yeah, they I think they paddle independently if they want to. Back leg, I didn't get too many back legs, they're already hidden. But it looks like it comes down, and I know he can paddle like in this direction, so even though it comes out like that this is yeah it's like a foot basically it's kind of like a, a human foot his legs come out like this and it goes like he's he's uh... you know sticking his feet outwards which is kind of normal unless you know it's like a person laying on the beach <laughs> and their legs are <laughs> he's laying, you know laying on his uh, spread eagle but in a belly style Okay, so these proportions are horrible I could do something like this. Yeah. Something like that. And a tail. I'm not going to nitpick on the tail. As you can see, now that's his flipper. Sometimes they don't seem to have the tail showing too much. This one, 
does in this one. You zoom in, you can barely see it coming out there. They do have a tail, there should be, but not all of them do. So, you know, that's just something else to remember. Anyway, I have to cut this for just a second. I'm going to come back and using that study that we just did, I mean, it's a very crude study. Obviously, I, I, wish, I wish you could go, like, if you're really going to do this, then you go on, like, Google and, uh, you know, Google images or find some anatomy for animals, whatever you have, and, and go deep into the details of exactly how the arms bend and stuff because um, that's all very important. Okay, like this one here, you can see it bends, it comes in, down, and then that way. That's pretty much, uh, that's normal with, uh, you know, in the workings with a lot of animals. But because, like, if it's a dog or a cat or a human, they all have that kind of si similar thing. There's, like, there's an elbow here and then a, a wrist, right? So you have, like, uh, upper arm, lower arm, and a hand, and the digits come down. And this is true, like, whether it be a dog, a cat, an elephant, and, you know, or whatever. So you could draw some kind of, like, uh, just whatever animal. Here you have the hips, and this one, and then this one, and then that. Right? So you bend the same way that humans bend their knees. It shows the basic form for pretty much all the other animals. And then you have the spine, you know, the vertebrae, and you put a tail in there, stuff like that. Of course, it's a little different down here. That's where it gets complicated. And up here, the collar, so the collar, shoulder blades, I meant to say, you know, shoulder blades. And they'll be stronger around this area because animals, uh, you know, they can run. So <clears throat> for that, we would I would assume we were looking at a two-eyed nostril creature here. With, I mean, it obviously looks very different from dogs, cats, and humans. But that trend is pretty steady throughout so many animals that I would assume that's the case that his he's also going to bend with like an elbow and a hand and it looks like he's got about five digits like like the rest of us so um, but it has to pop out the front of the shell so there's a bit of awkwardness what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that somewhere in here he probably has a joint for the shoulder this one comes out like that probably another joint there comes down here and then the five digits come out kind of like that but obviously he has to like push forward and deal with it. It's almost like he's wearing armor so he has to move around this uh, the shell that he has on. So if you got that in your imagination when you start drawing this it should help to um, you know to just sketch sketch things out. This one could look like uh, basically it's like baby baby legs popping out the back. You have a little foot here, a little knee comes in like that. It would look something like that. Yeah. I'll be back right in a second. I just have to pause and do something.